Hello and welcome to Frontington. Today I'm going to be taking my first steps into the dark and mysterious world of DCC. Just to give a little bit of context to this video before we start, this is the first episode in a series documenting a complete rebuild of my layout. And to find out more about the plan, check out my previous video, which uh, should be linked to from somewhere on your screen. Maybe. Anyway, the plan is to extend the layout over to that end wall, where I'll have a small fiddle yard. My first step is to make sure that DCC is a viable option, and for that I need some track to work with. I happen to have a length of flexi track in my cupboard, which will do just fine. It's old, but after a bit of a clean, it'll be okay for a quick bit of testing. Now to gather all my bits. This Arduino Mega will be my base station. I've also got this motor shield, which will sit on top and connect to the track. I'll also need a USB cable to connect the Arduino to my laptop, some crocodile clips to get power to the track, and a 12 volt DC power source. I'm following some instructions online, and I think the only tricky bit here really is that I need to avoid connecting the V-in pin, otherwise everything will explode, or something. I've just bent it outwards so that it doesn't go into the hole. I'm connecting a socket for the incoming 12 volt DC power, so that it's safe and easy to use. As for connecting this to the track, there are two sets of outputs, one for the main track and one for programming. We'll get to that later. Next, I can connect this to my computer via USB and install the DCC++ EX software on the Arduino. I couldn't get the installer to work for some reason, but the sketch file is easily available, so I popped that into the Arduino IDE software, compiled and uploaded it, and boom, I've got myself a DCC base station and I can test that it's working by checking the serial monitor. I mean, it's not actually doing anything just yet, but I can see that DCC commands are flying around, so yeah, that, that's a good start. I've also installed JMRI on my laptop, which is a free open source piece of software that talks to the Arduino so that I can control it. Again, it's not connected to the track or a loco yet, but after changing a couple of settings, I can see that it's working in principle at least. Now it's time to connect this to the track. I'm using the outputs for the main track for now, just using some crocodile clips to connect to the rails. Obviously this is just a temporary solution, just to make sure it works. Next I can connect the 12 volts power to the motor controller board, and no explosions yet, so we're good. Of course, a DCC control system is no good if there's nothing to drive on it. Fortunately for me, one of my locos is already DCC ready. This 5600 class tank engine. Now if I quickly pop the body off, you'll see there's an 8 pin socket already installed. I've bought this Lay's DCC Locomander 2 Micro, which is pretty basic, but it should be enough to get me started. I, I can always upgrade to a better chip later on if I really need to. All I need to do is pop out the blanking plate, slot the decoder in place, 
and we should be golden. So now we're on the test track and I'm going to connect power to the Arduino. And the locomotive hasn't shot off the track or exploded in a fireball, so that's good news. Back in JMRI, if I open up a throttle and power on the track, I should be able to tell the loco to move. <gasps> and look, it moves! I have successfully taken my first steps into DCC. How exciting! Something else that JMRI is really useful for is programming the decoder chip. Now I'm going to set the address so that it's more easily recognisable. Though this is a 5600 class, so I could use 56. Or if I wanted to use the extended addresses, I could enter the, the whole running number, in this case 6606. But I've only got one of this model, so the short address should be sufficient. Now I want to play with the movement itself. First, I want to set the minimum voltage at which the locomotive should move. This might take a bit of trial and error, but what I'm aiming for is a value that means it'll crawl as slowly as possible on, ste on speed step 1. I'll do the same with the maximum voltage, which will be a realistic top speed for this locomotive. Again, some trial and error is needed here. There's also a mid-voltage setting, which helps describe the acceleration curve. Since I've no idea how this model will behave once it's on a larger section of track hauling a typical load, I'm just going to set the midpoint somewhere around halfway between the minimum and maximum. Acceleration and deceleration rates are also important, as they describe how smoothly that change of speed happens. Again, more trial and error. Another cool trick up JMRI's sleeve is that I can control it from a mobile device. All I have to do is activate the Y throttle server, and as long as my mobile is on the same Wi-Fi network, I can connect to it using an app like Engine Driver. This would be so much more convenient, as I can move around the layout more easily. And that's it for this episode. Uh, next time I'll be making a start on building the new boards, so don't, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, so that you can easily follow the build progress. And if you want to support financially, head over to buymeacoffee.com to leave a small donation. But that's all for now, thanks for watching.